Bonnie, very good to have you on here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here too. Yeah, we're both here and and <laughs> I, th- I think we both appreciate it. So I think that's a good start. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, Getting right into it with you here. Um, How do you feel when you pick up a guitar or you sit behind a, a keyboard of some kind? Wow. Well, I think, man, I think the gamut, every single different thing, every single different time, uh, it's um, the body is uh, an instrument of its, uh, the way I make music is that I just channel everything. So my body is already an instrument. And when it goes up to a musical instrument, uh, it just, does what what the channel wants me to do uh so it's always different um but if I had to choose if you were like what is the most exciting time to be attached to a guitar or in front of a keyboard that's a good question yeah I'd be like my most exciting time to do that is at a concert Mm -hmm. yeah at a concert Uh, that's not only a good question it's a good answer as well Okay, good. <laughs> Both of them. Bad Thank a thousand. You. <laughs> Thank you. Well, the reason I say that is because I've been uh, home for the longest stretch of time. I've been home for a year and I've been staring at the keyboard and guitar um, almost with fear of touching it or being too close to it. So I'm like, it's a little confusing. I'm like, All right, what's going on, guys? Like, you know, like what's going on here? So I'm, I can only imagine that I like doing it. Uh, mm-hmm. But for three weeks, I've just been like, what are you guys, what are you doing here? You know? Yeah. Is that the first time that you felt that towards instruments? No. Okay. No. no. So, so, you've, a... so you've, you've gone through this before. This is not new. Correct. Okay. But everything that happens to me, I think I have some type of... um interesting brain that everything that happens always uh, uh, seems as though it's the first time uh I I have I can't recollect a time where it's ever happened before so I'm like oh my god oh my god like do I not like playing guitar but it's like no this is it's it's like seasonal uh but you know you always forget like oh winter like I just like different food like the plants are gonna look a little sad they're not. They're just resting. But yeah, every time I'm like, oh my God, I don't think this has ever happened before. I'm probably have to switch jobs. It's a anti deja vu, is what it seems like. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. I the gotcha. clinical term, I imagine. Yeah. Today I had to look up just this is so barely related, but uh I had to look up the word for window frame because window pane pane is the glass but Mm -hmm. i was like what's the other part like and i googled what's the not glass part of a window and they're like the frame and i was like oh no there's really something wrong with my brain you You can't remember all the words there's too many to to remember you know yeah but you seem like you know all the words so this is a good interview um maybe maybe it's too early to tell but uh, yeah there's exceptions <laughs> to the rule i'm one of them i'm not i'm not bragging i'm not bragging okay. i do know a lot of words okay <laughs> thank you i appreciate that because i i'm at a loss for them right now it's fine it's all right i mean it, it, i mean we're only two minutes in so i think oh, I, really? it, 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 yeah yeah no i'm no, i'm sorry that was 30 seconds yeah no, no, no. Kid- oh. <laughs> well just like also not an important piece of information but my computer my telephone and my oven all have different times uh within which i didn't know the computer and the phone could disagree um so you could be like it's been a half hour and be like oh yeah that's that's what the that's what the oven says it's got to be right um but Let's get on with it. I'm sorry to keep. Uh... No, I'm I'm glad you brought that up. That's a, that's a very interesting point because yeah, at, like you said, computer, uh, phone always on the same on the same time frame. I the oven get... or a microwave or something like that. That's always. That's my choosing. Yeah. That... <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, that that that's always up for interpretation. It's like that's <laughs> it's. I'm pretty sure it's not four thirty, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
No, yeah, I don't know. I'm. I mean, my phone says twelve nineteen. My computer says twelve fifteen, and I don't know what the oven says, but I'm sure. I know it's like ten minutes in the wrong direction forward. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh, all right. Well, you know, as long as you have a, 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 a just a general idea, I think that's that's a good jumping off point. Where did your interest in music come from? Where it, it was there was there a a person that was showing you music that that they got you into it, or how did you cross paths with it initially? Yeah, it's so weird. Um, the uh, not weird that you asked that. That's a normal question, but my answer might be shocking. Um. When I was a little kid, like five and six, I was super obsessed with Billie Holiday in this way of like, it's just a just such an interesting voice, you know, like, and uh, to not know what that person looks like or anything. I just was like, what? This is like, people like that, like, that's something people like. That's so cool. And then to learn, they didn't really say like, oh, like she's a drug addict, but they said that. I think they said that she was like alcoholic or something and needed alcohol to live and needed to sing to make money for the alcohol. And for some reason, I thought that was so cool. Um, I just like this idea of this cycle of um, singing for to live just seems super awesome. And then, um, yeah, and then more recently, I've always been attached to her and, and jazz in general. I went to school for jazz, which is so strange. No reason, uh, no, no, like uh, familial ties to jazz. But uh, I went to a healer um, who I was just speaking to and she was like, oh, you were a jazz singer in one of your past lives. And I was like, no kidding. And, uh, you know, that's like a through line, I guess, for me is, uh, is somehow as jazz singing seems to be an important or singing seems to be an important uh and what i believe through line between all of my uh incarnations oh, um nice. it's wild yeah I, I i like that there's a constant yeah i didn't know that that was a thing until uh i did i guess you know i find that a lot of times when people have an interest that seems very um niche yeah and straight like something that they could not have picked up um from their childhood it a lot of times is like a past life thing um that's that's what i i that's how i believe i believe that pretty strong all right Lee. yeah <laughs> i would have accepted strong or or the lee at the end both are both I'm, are acceptable i'm trying to impress you i i, I am i'm i am i'm, I'm already there I've, yeah you, you floored me so far yeah well, uh so so it was it was billy um billy that that got you into into music initially yeah yeah i just mind-blowing mind-blowing <laughs> yeah and then yeah my family only really listened to like show tunes um and billy joel and um like indigo girls it was like my exclusive after that introduction to music uh until i was about 11 or so when i was introduced to black sabbath and that like the same thing that billy holiday did where you're like wait what is this that was like whoa you're allowed to do that and then i was like okay this is a hundred percent what i'm gonna do for my job when i have to have a job um and that that was my like you know the the kind of like that will go down on my like gravestone is like like um listen to black sabbath once and then listened a million more times and that was their life bonnie dead now you know like yeah i would say that's the most significant thing that's ever happened to my ears is hearing the like the first black sabbath record the first song black sabbath on black sabbath black sabbath and i was just like wait what and yeah, that I I can remember it. It's a full body feeling I can access at any time of just like you're allowed to do that. And then, you know. Do you still feel that way now when you when you hear those tracks? Yeah, I do. It's funny. I really do. I I love that band. <laughs> I love those humans. Uh I 
I, my musical taste is really changing more than ever before. Um, I can't listen to things that are um, too like, I don't know, something. And I, I started to really like different instruments than I used to like. Um, but Black Sabbath, it just it will always be my Black Sabbath, you know, like it'll always be the first time. It's so weird. If I'm Everyone's going to have one. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm in a bad mood, they'll like at sound check or something. Someone will just start playing like a Black Sabbath and I'll just instantly get in a good mood. I don't always remember that that's how I can turn the tide, but uh, it works every time. Yeah. Is there is there a favorite album of yours? The first album. First album. Black Sabbath. It's a good so, answer. It's so good. What's your favorite? From from Black Sabbath? I not too I don't listen to Black Sabbath a lot. I'm not too familiar with it. that the volume four one though. Was that yeah, I that's what I, most people say. I would I, just I like stick with one. stick with that. Okay. That's the one that's cool to like. Oh, okay, cool. If, yeah. Have you seen a a lasting uh, impact from Black Sabbath, for instance, uh, on the music that you're you've gone on to create? That's a really good question. Thank you. That is a really good question. Well, having fallen into a trap of having a favorite band, uh, and being the age that I am like and um like i feel like people right now if they they would have a different experience like a 12 year old right now would have a much different experience but um having a favorite band at the time that i did made it so that i needed to know how they made their music and go to their influences um so at this point it's impossible to tell if I'm more influenced by their influences or them, but I feel like uh, my influences definitely stop. And it's not cool. This isn't a cool answer. Like I'm not cool by any means, but my influences stop uh, at at like the 80s. I don't I don't really know that much about music after the 80s. I feel like I've spent most of my um, entire life listening to music's, the people I like, their influences, rather than like who was influenced by them, which has led me, you know, uh, it, I don't know, maybe it's because it's easier. It's easier to go back in time. There's a limited amount of stuff. Uh, if you were to like listen to your influence, like who is influenced by your influences, it's unlimited. You could go on forever and will continue. On and on and on it goes, you know, it will never ending. It's just like a cesspool of joy you could possibly have. I'd rather just limit it to, uh, you know, the archives, the dark, dirty, dusty archives of music that are, you know, uh, has been laid out before me and I can access the bottom uh, should I choose. But something about the future, uh, unlimited access is just spooky. And so I, I, that's my answer. All right. Very well. Uh, when did you start making music? When did you start to, to go, all right, I, I want to proceed with making music now? Uh, that's an interesting question because I went to school for music, but I was too scared to sing in front of people. So I would just ditch every time I was supposed to do it. So I decided to be a musician at like some teenage age and went to school for it, but I didn't become a musician until uh, I could do it in front of humans, you know, and that was, um, and I, I joined a band just to, it's like either you're a musician or not, either, either you know, you can't keep saying you're a musician if you're not gonna do it, um, which isn't true now, but you know, one has to, force oneself to do um, things outside of their head, you know, mm -hmm. out of one's head. So then I played a show and it was, I was awful for a few years and, and then many, many more years later. Now uh, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a musician and I, I go on stage like all the time <laughs> and, and have no, no, uh, 
I know that that's what I'm supposed to do. It doesn't feel like I'm like defying gravity every time I'm doing it. Um, feels natural. Yeah. But that is what happened. So I, I it was a horrible process of almost like seven year torture kind of like um, exposure therapy, but without even the exposure, just like the, the proximity to exposure of playing in front of people. Um, and then finally, I was like, this is ridiculous. Like, you can't be a singer if you don't sing. Um, those are the rules. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't. Those are the I, rules. Yeah, those are the rules. Um, but I think it's I, I I think it is good to share this story because a lot of people have stage fright or all these different things. And I think that they would be very um, I think it's helpful to know like that it's uh, it's not permanent. Uh, every you know, it's not it's like I could not even say one word on stage when we started our band 10 years ago. Our drummer, Patty, had to say all the words, all the like, thank you. Uh, this is our last song and you know it's like you can do anything you want to do um but if you you just have to know if you want to and then you have to do it <laughs> you know <laughs> right was t taking a step back from that uh was the begin was the first quote unquote real band that you were in the witnesses was that where yeah. you started How'd you know that i do my research i try was it was that kind of the first jumping off point into a into a quote unquote real band for you being, being in that group. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I did a few other things before that, but uh, not like, you know, like we're, this is the band. We're a band. It's us. Kind of work, make this band grow and travel all over whatever. And us guys, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. That was my first band for sure. <laughs> What was that uh that experience like for you kind of being in a more legitimate project like that? Uh, I mean, that's a good question. I don't know like if you're finding this when you talk to people, you've talked to like amazing musicians, like uh so many cool people, but um and I'm adding but, to it today. That's <laughs> that's maybe. what we're doing here. Okay, but I don't have like high self-worth or self-esteem. It's uh, a gradual process. Um, maybe something that was taken away from me as a child or maybe something I just forgot about. Um, but now, you know, like looking back at that, uh, it's like, it, it's been a long process to build to be like, oh, you're a human. You're doing a great job. Um, and that's like, you're kind of, it's weird. Cause you're sort of like interviewing the like worm or whatever in the cocoon, like usually your caterpillar, like usually you just interview the caterpillar or the butterfly, but right now you're interviewing like the thing in the cocoon. That's like, I'm about to be proud of myself, but, uh, never before this moment. Um, and I'll never be less proud of myself than I am this moment. But I think that that band was like the dream, you know, like, uh, it was the dream. And, but I was very shy, very insecure, very like quiet, very hid from people, uh, and read books at the back of the bar and didn't talk to anyone. Very probably complained all the time. Um, and, you know, it was just like our van had no windows in the back and we'd just be like all smushed together traveling around this crazy country. Uh, you know, it was awesome, but uh, I didn't know it then because I, I did not have any self-worth. I hope everyone um, doesn't have, does that exponentially every day and doesn't have to, um, you know, uh, doesn't fight it as long as I did. <laughs> Accept it. Accept it. Come on. This is your chance. Do it already. Do it already. Uh so the the stint in that band was a, a couple of years, right? It was like five years. It was like more uh, longer than high school is what I remember everyone always saying. You do that longer. Or like in the band, like, man, we've been been a band longer than we were in high school. <laughs> That is a long time, though, if you, yeah. if you think about it like that. Yeah. Full, 
especially when you're like 20 you're like holy shit that's the oh sorry are you allowed to say that you can say whatever the heck you want please go ahead okay. <laughs> were you playing guitar in, in that band no i played uh i was like a gear bitch or whatever i had like a vox jaguar organ and i had a wurlitzer on stage every night like i had like stacked on top of each other just like the nicest gear you could possibly have i only played organ and keys i didn't ever play guitar until this band mm -hmm. uh but yeah that that was a crazy setup that i was thinking about that yesterday like carrying around like you know 100 pound keyboard in its beautiful case and the beautiful organ those things are like now that's like ten thousand dollars worth of gear i think you know then i bought them both for like 250 dollars or you know something where you're like you I knew it was a good deal but you're like also like okay Two, 200 bucks a little bit a little bit steep for all that that's yeah you, you you didn't try to haggle with the guy a little bit like yeah <laughs> we are we sure can we can we not how about cash how about we do cash <laughs> and a little bit less yeah, well, nobody wanted the like those instruments at the time because it. There, it. You know what? And I don't even care what the people are gonna say if I say this, but I have I have always been super. Fuck it, I'm gonna say it. Lucky with my gear, like nobody else would bring those instruments as their touring instruments. Um, just like the shit I bring now. It's so it doesn't make any sense, but. Like digital and electronic stuff never works for me. My computer, I can only do this. I can only do Zoom meetings on my computer. Nothing else works. But my instruments, I've always had just like um, these, you know, bits of heaven shaped like keyboards and guitars that just go on and on and on. Like uh, the amp I have, it, um, Music Man amp is, uh, I've had it for 11 years all over the country so many times you know 50 times it's been in the van eight hours a day for five years and i got it fixed for the first time like last month and i just you know there's not i feel like maybe i was negative before so i'd like to add this light lightheartedness is sometimes in certain ways you're really lucky and you should note them and tell a friend so you don't forget you don't forget to be grateful but yes, those, those, no one wanted those instruments because it's, they're meant to be studio instruments. You're not supposed to tour with them, but I didn't know that. Yeah. But do you, I mean, don't you feel like yeah, I'm using this in its intended purpose? It's supposed to be played and I'm using it and yeah. I'm playing it. Yeah. I'm not a person that has things up on the walls, like in that I. Yeah, you get the shit you want to play and then you play it because that's the point, <laughs> you know, uh, but it's, it's meant to be used. Yeah. Yeah. Those things are hard to fly with, though. So you have to you have to accept that that's not going to be part of your life if you fly a lot. Um, I'm, to... I'm not saying it doesn't come with drawbacks. I'm not, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. No, it's not all positives. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It can all be um, puppies and sunshine. Yeah, there has to be a little bit of this. This goes over the weight, the weight, uh, whatever limitation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, or it's just there. It's yeah, you just can't do it. It's not not possible. Sorry. I I didn't want to use those exact terms, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> so after leaving the witnesses, did you uh, uh, immediately go and say, "Hey, I I need to make my own band"? No. Oh, uh, -uh. <laughs> I was like, I never want to play music again. This is oh, so really? Yeah, <clears throat> and uh, and that Wurlitzer and that Jaguar are the price I had to pay, uh, because they've like I left them behind, and you know what happens to gear left behind, uh, it it goes into the ether, um, yeah. which is like I try not to think about it, but. Yeah, I just I was like I don't like this. This is this is dumb. I don't get why people do it. it doesn't feel good. Um, I hate everything. Um, I I'm gonna go away now, <laughs> you know. And then, um, 
and then I had like a drug problem and then I decided I didn't like having a drug problem so I decided to get better which is funny I thought about that this morning I was like oh yeah it was funny when you did that all by yourself without telling anyone and then I was like once I was all better I was like fuck what do I do and someone was like you should play music again and I was like oh yeah and so I just uh I just started writing some songs and then uh and then looking for bandmates uh and that's what happened <laughs> oh wow so there was there was a, a time that you just completely stepped away from music entirely did uh, d- uh disassociated from it yeah i was still writing but i didn't like um i didn't know why <laughs> i don't know i was just always right i guess like um but or I don't know if that it's even writing. I think it's channeling. I just would, because the way I write, it's just the whole thing comes, all the words all at once. And the hand just goes on the paper with the pen and it's all there. And then sometimes there'll be like one or two words. I'm like, that's too dumb. Like, I can't say that. So I'll change it. But like, it just all comes, it's already exists somewhere. All songs already exist somewhere, in my opinion. And they just fly to you at some point And um and I got a bunch of free songs when I wasn't in a band um and a lot of them have been on our the Death Valley Girls records uh which is interesting because uh because that's funny (laughs) that's why (laughs) are you still (laughs) yeah no no I mean (laughs) hey that's that's it I mean you 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 already said it that's law that's it that's those are the rules I don't know yeah yeah you gonna do about that uh (laughs) Are there still fragments of of songs or lyrics that are still being used from that time period now, even in these later releases from the band? Yeah, cause, yeah, because um, the way I used to like the, what what used to happen when I had things come to my head is that I'd have to go to a phone and call my answering machine and sing it into there um and I don't have like all those tapes I didn't it seemed like a really safe system back then but it wasn't so I'll get I think like right I'm always working with like maybe like 20 20 different like little seeds are happening um and I don't really get to choose when they come out fully I don't know how to explain it, but uh, yeah, there's like, there's some that I, sometimes I don't know if it's like a commercial. I, I just have like, it's like a commercial I've heard this music for and that's what it is. I have to often ask like, is this already a song? And everyone's like, no, you always ask that. Nothing's, you know, like, um, but yeah, I have, I would say like dozens of of fragments from I don't, from all all my life that I don't know um it just has to be exciting enough and some of the songs we have I've like recorded into voice memos like for the last 10 years like once a year for 10 years and forgotten but it's I'm not in charge of uh the brain or maybe just the body and the brain is in charge of itself I'm just overseeing it or something I don't know I I, I could see that I could see that yeah yeah okay yeah. I'm with you. So <clears throat> coming coming back into into music uh after that uh, the the hiatus did you have a sense of I mean like I I have all these things written down but did you did you find a new wind in it uh for for lack of a better term? Yeah. I had something to prove. <laughs> I was like determined. I got like um super fucked over by someone who treated me real bad real bad and I was like I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna do it so hard and so much better than like you could ever have thought that anyone would do this and I had um that was like the other time I've been angry in my life uh there's been two times but yeah it led to a like I needed to be in a band and like 
and I needed to like do whatever that was you know just like if you're I don't know whatever you are if you're like a doctor if you need to be a doctor like it's like you got to be a doctor if you need to be a baseball player like you got to be a baseball player like if you you know need to drink booze you got to drink whatever it is you need to do like I didn't have that until until yeah until after the break and then I was like I'm gonna do this now and I'm gonna do it good <laughs> at, at the initial starting point of of uh wanting to create this band Death Valley Girls did you do you feel any apprehension towards uh starting it at all I think I was blind with fury I think I was determined I think I forgot to be shy and um I think I forgot to be self-conscious um, and I just, I had a mission and you know what they say about person with a mission, um, they do it, you know. And Look at the Blues Brothers, it worked out for them. Yeah, you know? yeah. and uh, yeah, sorry, um, but yeah, no, I, uh, it's shocking to me, I'm, it's shocking, um, I have never like, that's never happened before or really since it's going to happen again. Cause I'm working on my self love stuff, but like, just like blindly or just like, just going in somewhere, not like giving a rip what you look like to other people, like um, singing in front of people, like just in, we practiced as a band for like a year before we played out and you know, uh, it was Larry, my friend Rocky, and Larry's sister Patty, who's the drummer of Hole, who some people might feel like would be, it would be hard to like bring songs to the person that like played with a, like one of the most famous front people in the world and that that would be scary or maybe like hard to do, but I didn't feel any type of thing that way I was just like gotta have songs if you want to be in a band gotta play them out loud if you want to you know have songs have them, and... have them be have them yeah, actually be and they, songs yeah yeah and like Patty's the coolest funniest person in the world uh Larry like really uh good friend um and yeah, it was just like we just did it every Friday. Uh, we practiced, and it was like, yeah, it was just uh, completely determined to do it regardless. Um, but, uh, but that didn't last forever. Now I I grew doubt later on. Um, but uh, but more but initially, initially you had some some energy going into. Oh it. yeah. Oh yeah, I wonder like if they could only sell that or can that. I did used to use alcohol, which I wonder if I should probably start doing that again because that's just free energy right there. Um, it's almost like the healthier I get, the less um, free energy I get. You know? Kind yeah. What's a, up with that? I don't know. It's a drag, explain though. that science. That's what I yeah. say. Yeah. What the <laughs> fudge? uh how how did you and and patty and larry and who was the other uh rocky rocky how how did this initial uh group form how did how, how did you cross paths with them how did you say hey i want i want to make this happen yeah my sister dina had a baby named milo and patty had a baby named b and now they're 13 year old <laughs> humans but they were in like I don't really know what it's called, but like before their school, there's like mommy play groups kind mm -hmm, of thing. Mm -hmm, right. And uh, I had been in Los Angeles and I was like, I like, if I don't find a band, I told my friend Rocky and my sister, like, if I don't find a drummer and guitar player in a month, like, I'm moving, moving. That's it. I'm out. Uh, and my sister's like, I know a drummer mom from mom baby group and I was like I don't know like I don't know and she like yeah and then I was just like okay fine 
And then it turns out, you know, she was like, it's she was in this band hole. And I was like, what? Uh, you know, and then um, and then we met and she was just super cool. And it didn't like that didn't really matter. Even with like didn't matter what what kind of band she was in before. <laughs> just a, a, a band will do. I guess whole will work. Oh, it's fine. Sure. I yeah. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we tried to keep it like a secret for a not a secret but like we didn't want you know we didn't like want anyone to know who was in the band for like the first two years we just wanted it to just be like um just like you just like us for the music when you started this this group this is around 2010 ish 2011 that the initial kind of seeds began i noticed the yeah, I think so. I noticed the internet says the band started in 2013. I don't know. I think our first show was in 2014. But I was and what I wasn't like, I don't know. That's what the internet says. Does that feel correct? Does that sound kind of in the <laughs> in the realm of that's around the era? Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. And I know our bio right now says like nearly it's from last year and it's a nearly decade old. So, you know, you do the math, you know, internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, does it, does it feel like you've been doing it for, for around, around a decade? And by the way, that's like, that's double this, the span of the, of the witnesses. I mean, that's, that's, that's way over the, the whole time of high school. <laughs> yeah um I don't know that's a good question I think if anyone can answer what a 10-year chunk of their life has felt like I want to meet that person yeah I don't I'm not I don't know if that's something I think you can ask someone under like 60 like how am I supposed to know what a 10-year chunk feels like like what do I compare it to you know what I mean like I haven't had years, enough yeah. to really be like, does that feel like 10 years? Because if you asked a 10-year-old that, they would have no idea. You ask a 20-year-old that, they have no idea. 30-year-old, they might, you know, 4-year-old, no idea. 50-year-old, they have, probably will say something. 60-year-old definitely has an opinion. 7-year-old, absolutely, you know, but I don't know, like... It feels like it's been my whole life, <laughs> you know? It feels like it's been forever. And I have changed more in, in exponentially in the last three years than ever before, but also maybe that's not true. So it's impossible to tell like what's happening in reality, but this has been the longest this 10 years um so far okay i think yeah this has been crazy 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 wild stuff i i held a koala like less than a month ago you know what i, I mean i like, saw that 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 picture yeah it's yeah. like we're not this isn't like a joke here like we're we're I've actually been, touching koalas yeah i held it and I uh, went to a different hemisphere, you know, yeah. it's like, so has this been long? Yeah. If you think about it in terms of how long did it take to hug the koala? It took 10 years, but well, how, how, and, how about that? How about the flight? Let's, let's start there, you know? Uh, and, actually, and, and of course, for people that don't know, we're talking about the, uh, Bonnie went down to, to, to Georgia recently, um, <laughs> the, the state of Georgia. In yeah. The, yeah. 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 Uh, very well known koala hot spot there. No, uh, Australia, uh, yeah, which is just insane to 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 be able to to bring uh, your your music there. And I was on the local news. Like, moreover, like more importantly than playing and touring Australia, is I was on the local news talking about puppies at the airport. Like, I mean, that's just not like. I mean, you can't quantify that. You can't explain if that happened in 10 years or not, really. Did my whole life lead up to that? I think so. Was the koala an added bonus? That, yeah, 
It was. Have I been? I would have about- looked at it vice versa. I would have looked at it. The puppies right. were the bonus. That's just me, though. I'm not. I'm not no, trying to negate what you're saying, but I just think from my personal standpoint, that's- you're right. No, 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 a hundred percent. Because we went there to hug the koala, and then, additionally, we got to hug puppies and talk about how much we love them for the news, which is insane, honestly. And it's a difficult yeah, journey. It's a difficult journey. Yeah, and I didn't I haven't really talked to anyone um since we've been back because um like our job shuts down in December and it just came back which is hilarious to me. Um but yeah, so this I haven't even like talked about how amazing like koala smell. Like I don't think people talk about that enough. Uh, I don't think, I don't think I've have, ever heard of the scent of a koala. Oh, they smell so good. I, <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I asked the like, um, the sanctuary dude. <laughs> I don't know what you call him, but I, I think sanctuary dude is the proper title. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I asked him. I was like, do they like <laughs> collect the pee of the koalas? Because I think that that's like what the smell is. Because they're everywhere, and it just smells like. Um, I know this is weird. And he was like, he's like, no, but you can go get it for free. Like just grab some eucalyptus from the ground. But it's like, they only eat eucalyptus right? and they smell like (laughs) puppies. And so they just smell like, it's kind of, it's hard to describe, but it's like a lot of people wear this perfume around the world these days. I've noticed this like one kind of perfume that everybody seems to wear if they wear perfume and they wear this one kind and koala pee is like what they're trying to smell like it's like it's like the they're wearing like the poor man's like koala pee and uh (laughs) i just think like yeah i've not gotten to talk to anyone about how good they smell um you know like uh, and it's we couldn't replicate it by just eating eucalyptus like it's it's only koalas and you know, they don't talk about that that much. And also Australia has like, their houses are all Victorian. Um, Nobody talks about that. Like everyone always talks about the opera house, which I feel like is the opposite of what is cool. But I'm, I'm into Australia and, uh, and I miss it, which is weird because I never thought I would actually go there before. Uh, I just wanted the koala photo that's all I wanted was the photo of the hug of the koala um I didn't care about anything else and we got so much more uh so much more really (laughs) oh and oh can I say something else real quick that this might be helpful um to somebody out there is that um because you asked about the flight that's the main thing is I am terribly afraid of flying I hate it we've flown like on about 30 planes this more than that honestly this year and I had to take um pills to like chill out um but after going to Australia which takes like 200 hours on a plane ride I think pretty much and having to fly in between every show or whatever it just stopped being scared I was like it takes so much more energy to be scared of this than to just like sit down shut up like the plane is just doing plane things. It's like not every time it shakes is it an indication that, that only you can recognize. That means the plane is about to fall from the sky. And it's like, I just, yeah. So uh, I I just would like to announce that I kind of think exposure therapy might work for everything, except maybe a couple things. But if, if anyone out there is like, oh, I, this is ruining my life, expose yourself to it uh because i'm no longer afraid of flying um and i never thought that that would be possible and go to australia oh yeah go to australia hold hold some hold some koalas dude they have bats that are like two feet long in width or in wingspan yeah that's crazy it's massive so cool the coolest place in the world Obviously, like that, that that is a moment that you think, wow, like we've really come a long way from since since starting this. 
there's only two ways to know if you did a good job if like because success is different to everyone um people measure it by all sorts of different things but like truly success is just a way that you feel there's nothing on the outside except like there's nothing on the outside that can make you feel good about yourself or know that you're doing a good job there's no like amount of numbers or this or that but for me personally I have always just said if I get the photo with the koala that means I won being in a band and I did that so I won and if I continue to be in a band moving forward uh it's just extra you know like I I don't know how other people mark or judge their um musicianship their success band. in music yeah I don't know how you do that because it's that's a slippery slope, you know, like, cause, uh, like I, it's a slippery slope, you know, uh, and I like to stay away from that slope altogether and just define, uh, success in that term, in, in those terms. Um, and lucky for me, I accomplished it. So I really, I don't ever have to worry again, which is awesome. <laughs> what is kept the music of death valley girls flourishing through these past 11 or so years well i can only answer that in one way can you hear me yeah um yeah as i'm on a spiritual mission this is not like um a joke or a drill i am like on a spiritual mission that I think everyone is on but mine is being um I'm an artist and it's being shown uh it's being like flashed out of me through music and I believe that we are all um eternal light beings and we are just experiencing our this life uh through these shells that are our bodies and I think that um we are perfect. We're not becoming our best self. We already are. We just forgot because like there's all this conditioning and world circumstances and rent and all of these things and all of our, you know, all the things that our parents had to do and their parents and on and on and on and, um, you know, economics, racism, all these things that just like make us forget that we're eternal beings and that we are our best self. And as we go along, I feel like we like tear away at all of that conditioning and all that shit to like re become like re re remember just remember maybe um, that we are our best self, we are our highest self, we are everything. And I think that this is just like uh, the ways that I'm learning to remember and wake up is just what our records are. Um, and it's just a little like um, just different levels of figuring that out and different like ways of, yeah, trying to help other people wake up and remember that. And I think that that's the only way you can really measure what the band is doing is just by sort of what where we are in our spiritual quest to wake up and help other people feel good and whole. And that's crazy sounding, I know, but that's really what's going on here. Um, so, yeah, it's uh, it's funny because it's true, um, but it's a uh, it's it's the only thing I know to be true is that we're supposed to be doing this. We're supposed to be delivering these songs and helping whoever hears them uh hopefully understand the messages we're receiving um but yeah hopefully hopefully that'll continue but there's no like it's not like death valley girls it's just like this like whole thing is just happening it's just happening man you know <laughs> and it seems like it happened to the beatles and other bands too they just become like you know not like psychedelic music but like shit just gets more psychedelic as you like go on your spiritual journey and you're like whoa gotta share these messages like 
you know, like, uh, you know, like all these messages that we're learning as we learn them, like darkness reigns that record. We were super obsessed with people not worrying about death. We were like, it's, you're only dead like to people on earth, but we're all together somewhere like eternally. So don't worry. You know, that was like the big message. And then under the spell of joy, there was this idea that if you said um, stuff enough times or said like these powerful words every night, you could, uh, that would create some type of whatever each of the songs is about magic spells and incantations and stuff. Uh, and then the last record is all the shit we learned so far, um, but for our next incarnation, so we don't have to learn these lessons again. Like when I found out I was a jazz singer in a past life, I wanted to hear my, what I sounded like. I was like, holy shit, if I could listen to my record of my past life, that'd be insane. So this record is that. So like next life, I'll be like, oh my God, you were in a band? Whoa, I wonder... I got to find it and I'll be able to because I left all these secret messages in the record and out on the art of the record. And then in my next life, I'm like, oh, my God, I don't have to be sad. I don't have to feel lonely. Like, awesome. That's so cool. Like, thank God I don't have to relearn all those old, dumb, you know, whatever lessons, you know. Uh, so that's does that answer that question? Yes, it does. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. What good. what do you want people who listen to your music to hear? Or the what is the message of the music? Well, uh, I mean, each song is a different spell. Like, so like on the last record, there's one that's for like when you're in the shower, like in to like wash everything all energy all stuff away so i'd want them to take that away <laughs> it's like you can use that or like you know, that song magic powers that song like uh is about like all the things that you um doubted about yourself or people made fun of you for or make you different than everyone else that's actually like your magic power that's not your you know like um shame bucket or whatever is there ethos for this for this band or or a mission perhaps yeah it, it's to remind everybody that they're like we're all one man we're all connected and like for real everybody's core true self like is 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 who they already are everything else is just blocking that and if everybody like just if people weren't meant to be pushed into box, uh, people, people are pushed into these boxes of like just if you the easiest way to describe it is like gender roles. Like if when you make like a boy think that being a boy is one thing, and a girl being a girl is this other thing, and you shame people for not being those things, and you just force them. If you force people into boxes, that's like that's where all the problems come from is not just is is from not letting people just be who they are. And I think that people know who they really are and are in touch with it. The world will be okay. It will be a happy place. And I, I am a very hopeful person. I believe in, I love humans. I love earth. I am an earth bitch. And I think that our band just wants people to feel confident and feel good about themselves and be true and find out find out that and also enjoy the planet like that's why we came here came here to enjoy the planet you know and there's so so much so much all of the good stuff people are like blocking out um just to i don't know why but i think it's because they don't know they're allowed to like you know just enjoy the planet and be kind <laughs> you know that's our message I, is that a it's good, a good message? message it's a good message yes <laughs> okay. yes absolutely um bonnie i do appreciate you coming on here thank you very much but yeah. before we wrap it up i got some promo to do here oh god so death valley girls music streaming everywhere wherever you get your music that's where you can find them and uh 
You can find the vinyl through suicide squeeze dot uh my shopify dot com, right? Yeah. Sounds good. You, you heard it here first. Okay, Oops. good. Uh and people can also find uh other vinyl and merch through the band camp, which is at death valley girls dot bandcamp dot com. And everybody can stay up to date with news, shows, and all that uh good stuff by following the band on Instagram, right? Is that the best place? Yeah, wherever you like to follow stuff, they, right. we have that. I'm really bad at like TikTok. I wouldn't follow us there. I all right, so no TikTok. But how, let's just have them start with the Instagram, which is oh, yeah. at Dead Valley Girls on Instagram. No underscores, just straight across. And then the podcast as well. Right? Really? Well, well I mean, the Dead Valley Girls podcast, that's, that, that's out and about for people to go listen to. Right? You want people to? Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. This is this is this is to prom- this is the promotion part okay. of the podcast. Yeah, so go check out uh Death Valley Girls podcast. It's everywhere, right? Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, all that. I guess so. I just press a button and it goes somewhere. Where does yours go? Well, what what I just mentioned, YouTube, Spotify, Apple. So I'm assuming that everything wherever wherever you find this podcast that's where you could find the death valley girls podcast but (laughs) scroll down below it'll 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 be linked below to to wherever you find it that's yeah that little bit all linked below and is there anything else we got to promote before we we wrap it up here um yes is that okay please um that's what this time is used for okay well i'm trying a new thing uh I try a new thing like every month just to see if it improves my life or not. And uh, it runs out on the 25th and it has improved my life. So I'd like to share it with everyone is when something like every time that you do something that makes you feel like good, like focus on it and think about it. And when something happens that feels bad, focus on it and just see how it feels for a month. You'll get really like good at like your intuition um, and it'll make your dreams pop off. I've been having great dreams. So I would just like to share that information with everyone. Oh, beautiful. Bonnie, you're awesome. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop recording this and I'll talk to you in a minute. Okay. Okay. Bye.